Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, every trading day at Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, thanks for having me on again. Um, Actually, I, I sent you over four charts. Hope you got them. I have them. I have the first one up right now. Absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, chart one is just kind of short-term analysis. And we got out on Friday and we got back in yesterday. I thought the correction may be a little bit bigger, but it's probably ending. But anyhow, in a nutshell, going into last Thursday, yep. we're up six days in a row. Right. And... and it, Market does a lot with momentum. I'm starting to look at a lot of different type of things, and momentum kind of rules a lot of different. Um, well, actually, kind of rules the stock market. Yes. But anyhow, if you get the market up six days in a row, within five days, it'll be higher eighty three percent of the time. Wow. That's so what last. Is, yep. Okay. Yeah. So last Thursday, uh, the market was down. Friday was down. Uh, Monday down. Uh, no, Monday was a holiday. It'd be down Tuesday, down Wednesday. Uh, but anyhow, on this pullback, we started. So, you know, you're up six days in a row. Uh, the market's supposed to be higher within five days, 83% of the time. Well, five days is Friday. That'd be five trading days. So t so either uh, the market's supposed to bottom, you know, today or tomorrow. Yes. To get this rally going. So, anyhow, the market did pull back, and the only time you really want to buy if you start to see panic in the market. If you don't have panic, then you're not going to have a bottom. And on Tuesday, uh, the market trend closed at 1.71. Anything above 1.2 is considered panic. And ideally, you'd like to see down to greens minus 200 or greater. We got 177. That was close. And... There's some rules that I kind of developed over the years with that. Um, when you get that kind of combination where you get a trend above 1.2 and down to reading below minus 200, then quite match it. But you usually uh, start looking for a low within the same day as readings to us two days later. Okay. Well, so two days later would be Friday. Um, uh, a day later would be yesterday. And it's one of the reasons why we got a bicycle. And yesterday we had a 1.38 trend reading. Well, if you get two days, if the market's an established uptrend, which I define established uptrend, is when, on a weekly time frame, if the market is above the mid-Bollinger Band, it's uh, in an intermediate term uptrend. That's what's happening now. So, in that type of uptrend, if you get two days of trend readings that add up to three, uh, you're usually looking below the same day, possibly as late as a uh, day later. So you got kind of two different combinations of panic. You got a two-day trend over three, and you got a, uh, a trend reading 1.71, and a turn down degree. You know, I, I probably the audience is spinning their heads right now. No, <laughs> no, no, no. This is you know what's so great about this, Tim and folks. Okay, is this is that we're going to go through two segments because I saw that you sold. You know, you sold basically at the high. And I saw when you were getting back in last night, I says, this is so intriguing. In particular, Tim, you know, because I went over your workshop. I've gone over that workshop four times already. And, and you know, it was an amazing workshop. Thank you very much. Uh, it was just fabulous. And I was, that's what, you know, I couldn't wait to get you on to ask you there, those questions about the aspect of what is amazing to me is that, you know, you could get a um, panic even though we didn't go down that far. You know, but yep. that you can see that the aspect of that that trend was saying that people are really nervous, right? I mean, that's how you're looking at it, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, you got to get people on the stealth side, right, to get that trend up, um, right? Because you know it, it's a advanced decline and volume combination indicator. Yeah. So you got to you got get you know so basically the the dumb money is selling and the smart money is buying is what it right. kind of boils and then, down to. In this particular case, you put that together with the market being at the mid-Bollinger Band, right? Well, uh, there's there's a little bit. Well, anyhow, there's more than that. Define, no, I get it. I get it. Okay. That's cool. I, yeah. This. Well, what I define as an uptrend is when the market stays above its mid-Bollinger Band on the weekly time frame. Oh, so cool. I get it. Place. Okay. Stays so, above and amid. So, so when when I say the three day or the two day trend has to be above three, 
the market has to be an established uptrend. Yes. You know, above the weekly bullet. So anyhow, there's a lot of different roles going on. No, no, that's cool. Yeah. So it, so anyhow, it works it works pretty good. So anyhow, the the bottom window there yep. is the uh, two day trend. And I just marked it when. Uh, well, this is uh, the average. So two days average is one point five. So uh, I marked the times when the two day trend did get above uh, one point five or. When you add them up, be three. So, and you can see it picked out all the lows decently over the last couple of months. Yes. Uh, so, um, so anyhow, it's it's pretty good. There's another thing too. On Friday, you can't quite see it on my chart there, but Friday, uh, we hit a new high on higher volume. Market, my opinion, never makes. And you probably could find an example, but it's pretty rare. But on a daily time time frame, you never make a final high. You always make a final high on lighter volume, never yeah. a high, higher volume. Right. No, you make a sure. higher high on higher volume, you're going to at least go back up and test that high. Right. So even Friday, I kind of sold. I was kind of nervous because I sold because it, um, I was thinking that we're probably not going to go down far. And if I started seeing panic and then ticks and trend, I was going to kind of be in a hurry to buy back. Yeah. And... Uh, so anyhow, that that may be right. So I maybe did get the you know closing low yesterday, and uh, the next rally we should break above at least last Friday's high because okay. last Friday's high had higher volume. Okay, I don't know how high is high is going to be, but right, um, it, it could be it could be interesting. So yeah, yeah. So cool. Uh, okay, and, do you want to go to the next chart? Yeah, we we can go to the next chart. This is you know that's. A, that's my analysis for kind of the reasoning why I got out and got back in. No, no, I'm with you, and I think it's fabulous analysis, man. I was, I was, you know, the I'm I'm really intrigued, Tim, with this deal about the panic, and you don't have to have a vicious market going all the way down to have panic, and I'm quite familiar with that. But now it's nice to have a couple tools to look at it that way. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, if you don't, matter of fact, off that top back in January of 2022, when that market was starting to go down, the trend didn't go up. Right. And that was a big warning sign that, you know, something, something bad's going to happen. And yes. It and uh, uh, so you've got panic coming right off the top. It's usually a pretty good sign. If you don't have panic coming off the top, you know, you can buckle up your belt because it might go on for a while until you do finally get panic. Right. But, you know, I, I've read a lot of different books over the years. Some got me on the wrong track, and is and it's still stuck in my brain. I'm trying to still try to forget those stuff. But in a nutshell, from my years' experience, you know, panic is is really a good thing for the market. Yes. You know, if you if you can find it, uh, then there's a lot of different indicators you can use. You can use kind of advanced decline lines. You can use McCall and Osler type things, the yep. summation index. You can use the VIX, you can use it for short term, you can use the trend and tick and, nice. and a bunch of other stuff. Stay right there, Tim. We'll come right back. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 56. NASDAQ's up 81. S&Ps are up 3. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Oyd, and we are bisecting and dissecting this market. Uh, should I go to the next chart now, Tim? Yeah, we can go to the next chart. We're kind of... Went over that first one pretty good. That was daily. This is a weekly um, SPYs, and it goes back to uh, mid 2018. Okay. And um, anyhow, I want to actually talk about the bottom window. The bottom window. Yes. Is the percent B, and what that says is if it's at the midline of uh, uh, let's see how I say this. Anyhow, it's, it's it measures where the Bollinger Bands are. Uh, so this is a weekly Bollinger Band on the SPYs, and when the the bottom window gets above one, it means that market is above or is at the upper Bollinger Band, and when it's at 50, it's at the mid Bollinger Band, and when it's at below zero, it's below the Bollinger Band. Okay. So, so anyhow, markets uh, they they kind of uh, they get out of it. If they're going up too fast, that's usually a bad sign. And what I want to point out is when it gets way above uh, one, 
on this last go around, it did get above one, but not a lot. Of going back to what into about five six years here, the highest it ever got above is mid Bollinger Band was the back in, at the top near the top anyhow of 2021. It got up to like 1.25, I think it was, and I circled it in red on that chart. I see it. Yeah, never been. Yeah, and it's never been higher in that time frame I have shown. It got close here over you know, the last week or so, but didn't quite get there. So it kind of made me a little bit nervous. But anyhow, I got up there, and markets tend to always go back to the norm. When it gets out of the norm, it goes back to the norm. The right. norm on, on this big trend is basically the mid-Bollinger Band. That's where the norm is. Okay. Uh, so it, it, if it gets above the upper Bollinger Band too, ma- too much, most likely at least going to go back to mid Bollinger Band, or could possibly even go a lot lower. Right. But okay. It's a it's it's kind of a good indicator to tell you kind of where you are. Yes. And I kind of use that conjunction with the um, the uh, VIX, which is the next window up from the bottom. Okay. The second window up. I see. Yep. Uh, so anyhow, the bone or the VIX. This is on the weekly time frame. Anything below. 17, uh, which is, I have it all in uh, pink there. Yes. Times when it's below 17. The market's usually in a trending mode. And we've been below kind of 17, you know, generally since about April. And today we're hitting like 12.58 last time I looked at it. We're like we're hitting new lows. And that's usually, uh, you know, if the market's going down, and the VIX is going down. That that's not supposed to happen. When the market goes down, the VIX is supposed to go up. Right. So if it's going down, that kind of gives you going back, referring back to page one. The reason why I went long, I noticed the VIX wasn't even going up. Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, so that kind of gave me more courage, I guess, to step in that trade yesterday. Which is so cool. Uh, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, because you know if the VIX was going down along with the market, you know I'm thinking, well, now you know, now you got, you know, what's the indi- what indicators do you you uh, rely on? Not all indicators work all the time. That's the reason why I personally use a bunch of type of different indicators, and I like the the ones that show panic preferably because right. once you start getting panic, you know you're at least getting close to a low. It's not the you know right. It's it's hard. If you don't have panic and and you're just buying in the market, you're going to just blow yourself up. Right. So, but at least you got panic. You know you're getting close to a low. Yes. So, but anyhow, uh, anyhow, with a VIX below 13 now, um, and and so this, I think this correction is over. But what I'm watching right now is how far we're away from the mid Bollinger Band and where we are right now in the market. So if you get too far from the mid Bollinger Band, and then you start staying above the upper Bollinger Band for any length of time, you're going to head for trouble. And so I'm kind of watching. I'm thinking if the market was up six days in a row, that predict the market will be higher within, you know, a few more days or yes. so. So next week uh, could be a, a decent up market. Then after that, you got Fourth of July. Well, uh, Fourth of July time frames. A lot of times you can have uh, highs or lows in that time frame. Right. So I'm thinking the next high could be a worthwhile high, and you may see that uh, the, the some summer dog days, I guess you might say, where a consolidation may maybe starting, and we could possibly pull back to the pretty cool twenty area. Sometimes you know later. You know, in July, maybe August. Sometimes. Right. Because, Tim, so uh, if we got into that up of Bollinger Band and then you, the trend and tick came in, you know, simultaneously, meaning, you know, that you, you'd be saying that, okay, hold it, there is a little too much exuberance in here. We might be hitting a high, right? That's that's kind of how you'd be looking at it, right? Me right now? No, or, no, or no. That was speculating last, that, uh, you know, it was speculating Friday. going forward. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, last Friday I forgot how I put it to my scribe, but I was uh, well. There's two. There's two things I remember now. We we closed above the mid Bollinger Band on the on the weekly time frame on Friday. That's usually not a good sign. And the ten day average of the trend was down to around point eight. Yes, so yeah. that's just that was showing a little bit too much exuberance on a short term basis. So at least that what I thought was going to at least stop the the rally. 
and a leaf flip it sideways and possibly could even have a decline. Depends how the market reacted right. the following week, which is this week. Right. We didn't get panic. Uh, then I thought we maybe hit, we'd take a shot at 420. Yeah. We did get panic. Well, they were probably just in a minor consolidation. We're probably going to say, uh, start heading higher again. And with a two day trend adding up around three, we got quite a bit of panic in a short period of time. So I think that's enough fuel uh, for the market uh, to break the recent new highs. Yes. So I think a release going to break above Friday's high, and you know, how high is high? I don't know. Right. Because um, on the on the daily too, I mean, to you know, like if you look at the that. spy today, I mean, there's hardly no volume, and the spy's already rejected lower price. It's going to have tremendously lighter volume as to what it's going against. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. You know, the right now as we stand, so the spy only has 50 million shares and that's going against 95 million. It's like, okay, really? You know what I mean? We got to 333, yeah. 433, 60, and we're 435, 70, 81. You know what I mean? So I, I, I can see that and it doesn't even look to me, no, we're not. We're not gonna do what we did yesterday. We did 76 million shares on the way down, which is still light because we hit at the highs, we're at 114 million, right? Yeah, I get it, right. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the volumes. I always watch how you break new lows. Yesterday, we did. Uh, uh, actually, I was comparing the volume instead of the day before yesterday's low compared to the day before that. I was comparing the volume of last Thursday, and we seemed to couldn't get through that last Thursday's low. So yeah, I'm no, that's exactly what I'm Thursday's doing. Low. Same thing. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, right. And that's that's over a hundred million. Right. So. You know, there's no volume to try to push this thing down. Uh, so uh, I'm thinking it's, it's looking good. So good. I'm well, okay. So let's stay right there because the next two charts we have, folks, are gold. And I know we got a lot of gold metal people out there that are going to want to hear this. All right, Tim, just stay with us. We'll, uh, right. we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow's off 42. Nasdaq's up 109. S and P's are up nine. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Morton. We're going to move on to the metals market, folks. So, Tim, I have the third chart up, which is the, you know, the XAU and then the ratio, historic lows, and then the rate of change. All right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's flip to uh, chart four. Okay. I have uh, it just, up. Just, it's a daily chart. Yes. This is kind of a, a short-term chart. Anyhow, something kind of unusual is going on here, but, you know, the bottom chart is the 18-day average of the up-down volume percent. Oh, I, or, no, it's not. It's a fit, excuse me. It's a 50-day average of the up-down volume percent for GDX. So it is just the up-down volume is for just the GDX stocks. You can take a 50-day average. Anyhow, the next chart above that, or the next window above that, that's the bottom window, is the 50-day average of the advanced decline for just GDX. Well, now, the bottom window, I went back as far as I could go, which is basically 2010, and I marked the times when this ratio, or this 50-day uh, uh, moving average of the up-down volume, <coughs> excuse me, got below minus 20. And, he, uh, and every time it got below minus 20, the market quit going down and actually flipped sideways. It went sideways for uh, several weeks. So according to that indicator, the decline's done, but we're not necessarily going to go up. Because uh, I had blue arrows drawn on the GDX chart, and and they flipped sideways for a number of weeks. Um, I, I, I didn't go back and count how many weeks, but you know we may go sideways possibly most of the summer here. Uh, so yeah, I drive think, everyone crazy, basis, right? The, go ahead. I said drive everyone crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drive it, which is kind of good when everybody gives up. It's time to look. To investment. But anyhow, I'm thinking this market's probably, you know, the downtrend's done, but trouble is the uptrend probably not going to start. It's going to flip sideways. Okay. And so, but sideways good. Sideways bills cause, you know, the old Weisskopf method. Oh, yeah. The longer the sideways yeah. movement, the longer the rally after it gets going. But yeah, they're going to drive you, uh, uh, people's, uh, uh, drive you nuts here. What's unusual, every time the uh, bottom window uh, which is the up-down volume, got below minus 20. The next higher window, which is the advanced decline 50-day average, also got below minus 20. 
uh, Mark, that in that red arrow or the red lines there shows the times when all those had happened. Right. Well, this time around is the first time around that the uh, 50-day average did not get below minus 20. We're sitting around minus uh, 13. I can't quite read it. May have 15, I think. Okay. Yeah, 15. So, we're, so, so what the heck does that mean? Well, it may mean that the advanced decline line is actually stronger than the up-down volume, and we're still probably setting at a low here, but maybe a stronger low than the previous times I have those red lines uh, indicated there. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Right. But either way, I, I, I'm thinking we're, we're done going down, not saying we can't go down another percent, but in general, we're probably finding support here. And if you look on the GDX chart, there's quite a bit of support around that 30 range, which is that trend line I got drawn, that horizontal red line. It's, you know, it's right around 29, 30 range. You probably want to find support there and just kind of probably go dead for for the next several weeks. So, anyhow, that's my analysis of, of the short term. Yes. Now we go to we go to the bigger picture. Okay. Which is back to uh, to uh, chart three. Okay. In the middle window. Yeah, uh, the middle window is a monthly silver gold ratio. Yes. And and this chart goes back far as I could go, which is like 1983 or something. Okay. Uh, but what I did notice here, back in 1991 and 93, it hit, the ratio hit a bottom in this region where we're pretty close where we're at right now. And we hit it back in 2020, and we hit it back in, uh, well, August of 2022. So historically speaking, this ratio is extremely cheap on a bigger time frame. So, you know, historically we were bottoming I don't have that trend line drawn, but if you look at the 2003 low and the 2009 low and the 2010 low, all happen around, looks like about 0.013 on that ratio to the right. And uh, what we broke down to, we're back at the 92 lows as far as the ratios go. So to me, that's pretty important. You go back to where the ratios historically found lows and it made a double low back then, and we're making a double low, even though it's over a couple of years now. So I'm thinking something important could be happening. And I, I do a lot of stuff with momentum. And so I, I use, you know, RSI is kind of a momentum indicator. Uh, the rate of change is another momentum indicator. And then percent B, which kind of measures where the, the stock is, where it is compared to the Bollinger Bands. And when you get down below zero, means you're hitting below the Bollinger Band on that particular issue. Right. So you, you got three different moments. Well, yeah, you only need two of the three, but you got two of the three uh, momentum indicators hitting a low here back in, in August of 2022. So that was the bottom of last year. And we, we've been basically going up. And I measured the times how long we've we've gone up after those particular bicycles going back to 1985 and they're all at least one year um and we've been going up um for well not even a year yet august will be the year but that'd be the minimum we go up right and the previous uh, the previous signals have generated have at least gone up 100 percent well one went up 95 percent but all the others at least 100 percent or more so to get 100%, we should go back about 180 on the, this is the XAU. So we start out about 90, do 100%, you should do about 180. And at least, you know, a, a year. So I'm thinking on a short-term base, we may flip sideways. and But we're not at a top. I think that the rally may start in August. And I think the most powerful point of it where uh, comes, you know, probably later this year going into next year is what I'm starting to, I'm thinking. Yeah, you, you know what's so interesting too, Tim, is that I've been watching like Barrick Gold, right? So Barrick, you know, is trading 1634 right now. It came all the way back to its sign of strength off the bottom from March 10th. Now, this is what it did. We came off that bottom and you came, the first day you came off with 22 million, the second day was 37. Well, yesterday we rejected that with 13. And even though gold's still getting smoked today, Barrick's up 20 cents. 
And then Newmont is the same deal, meaning that, because if you take the GDX, or the XAU, the HUI, see, if you just take Newmont and Barrick, they're 19%, man. <laughs> Newmont's 10.3% of the weighting, and Barrick is 86 So I, I can see what you're saying, man, and it's so intriguing. Because I can, you know, on the gold contract, it looks like it wants to go to 1902, but on the continuous contract, we already hit 1912. So it's like, okay, man, you know, this is going to get interesting, man. Yeah, so. I, I don't have a short tone, but I, I watch also the XAU to gold ratio. Yes. And if you look at that ratio, we've, we've gone virtually nowhere since 2000. I don't have that thing in front yeah, of me. I'm with you. It's been years. It we is. We haven't gone nowhere. Well, listen. And I think we're going to break out of that uh, basing period yeah. at some point. It's, it's always a so. pleasure, Tim. Have you back next Thursday, man. You have a great week and a safe week, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you later, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. <laughs>